Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Welcome to the New Life in Jesus Christ Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Hallelujah. If you're in need of a touch today and you're tuning in to this broadcast and you know someone who needs a touch from God and needs a touch to see and from Jesus, call them and ask them to tune in to this broadcast. And those that are here, we thank you for coming today and thank you for your attendance in Jesus' name. We just want to give God the glory for all that he's done. We ask for your attendance as we just Come to give God the glory. Come to give God the praise. For he is worthy to be praised. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. For the word said that there's nothing too hard for God. And if you believe in God for healing today, he can heal you right now. He can heal you at your very moment. He can meet you right where you are and take you where he wants you to go. If you just only believe, believe him for your miracle today. Believe him for your miracle today in the name of Jesus. Let us stand as we enter into prayer. Father God, we come right now in the name of Jesus, just blessing your name because without you we can do nothing, but with you we can do all things. We say, Holy Spirit, thou welcome in this place to charge the atmosphere in this place. We come against all territorial spirits. We send the word through the airways and the byways and the highways in the name of Jesus. That the word would go forth with boldness, conviction, and authority in the name of Jesus. To captivate, to change, and transform the people's hearts, minds, and their souls in the name of Jesus. That they will receive the word of God. And we thank you as they receive the word of God. And as they believe the word of God. That lives will be changed, souls will be saved, hearts will be mended, and they will, say they will be touched in the name of Jesus. And that, Father, that someone will come running and ask him, what must I do to be saved in the name of Jesus? So, Father, we thank you for souls being saved, lives being healed, broken hearts being healed in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, crush wounded people being mended. In the name of Jesus. And people come running back to you. Asking thank you Jesus. For healing my broken heart. And that people are getting a recommendation to say. Jesus you are my savior. You are my healer. You are my Lord. Hallelujah to your name. We give you the glory. The praise and the honor. For who you are. And what you're going to do this day. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. Glory to God. I praise God. Thank you, brother. Amen. God is so good. Send it over. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, I am I'm ready to release the anointing today. God said that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Woo. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm, 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 I'm on fire. <laughs> I'm on fire. Glory to God. And I want to release this, this anointing today because I know that there are people, there are many people that are listening to these messages and God is touching lives. People are contacting me and thanking me for these programs, amen, and, and I thank God for them, amen, because see, it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I thank God for all that he's done and that he is doing. I know my brother prayed, but now I'm going to say something to you. Father, I ask you to anoint every ear to hear today, prepare every heart to receive, Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you right now, Lord God, that we're going to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty and majestic name of Jesus. And all that agree with that said, 
Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. I know we're in for an exciting day today. How many of you are actually believing God for a miracle? Amen. How many of you actually believe in God for a miracle today? Amen. amen. There's a lot of people that are hurting. There's a lot of people that are looking and, we, to, and they're waiting for a manifestation of the glory of God. Well, today can be your day. Amen. God is, is said in his word, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, today can be your day. Open up your heart to receive what God has for you today. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel, uh, uh, I feel a, a shout coming on. Glory to God. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, we've been teaching along this line now for, for how long now? A uh, couple weeks? No, three weeks. This is yeah, the whole month. Yeah, this is this is number four. And I forgot to acknowledge it as number, at part four on the on the uh, thing. But I did acknowledge the, the scripture that we are coming from today. That's Exodus mm -hmm. chapter 15 and verse number 26. Exodus 15, 26. Amen. You know, we was here on last Sunday. We, we, I mean, we ministered a powerful word on last Sunday. Amen. And, uh, and I sung a song by Ray Boats. And Facebook would not allow that message to be aired because of that song. I don't understand that. I paid for the soundtrack. And I don't understand. Ray Bolt wasn't here saying it himself. It was me saying it. And I paid for the soundtrack. But they did not let the message air on last Sunday. Amen. They let it play throughout the, while you were viewing and everything, but at the end, they were not allowed to air, continue. Amen. So I don't understand that. I'm going to have to contact Facebook and ask them what's going on. When you pay for a product, you should be able to use that product no matter where you are. Amen. And, uh, and I'm not charging people for these, for, these, for these sermons. So there should not be any issue concerning uh, 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 royalties and whatever. I paid for the thing. Okay. Hallelujah. And so I don't understand that. But that's okay. This time. They don't believe. That's Amen. Jesus, okay. <laughs> Glory to God. But anyway, with that being said, I want you to release your faith today. I want you to release your faith. Especially you that are in here today that believe in God for your healing. And you that are viewing us by the internet. You that are listening to us by the internet. Amen. I want you to release your faith today. And believe God for your miracle. Now I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm receiving your notes, your letters, your emails that you're sending me. Telling me that you're so glad that you found my, 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 my program and and how it's been a blessing to you. I'm, I'm receiving all your notes and everything. Amen. I'm receiving all your letters and everything. But I want you to not only believe for what you can receive from God for right now. I want you to believe for, that you will receive divine health. Amen. Divine health. That means you're not only going to be healed today, but you're going to be healed. You're healed your, health, your healing is going to remain. It's going to remain in days to come. Amen. You're not going to lose it just because uh, some, something went wrong. You're going to keep the faith. You're going to hold fast to what God has done for you and what God is doing for you. Amen. So I want you to prepare your hearts because I believe today can be your miracle breakthrough day. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. So I'm going to sing you a song. Amen. I, and I hope that, uh, that they don't stop this <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
as she is here, we are going to yield to his leading, to his guidance, and we're going to follow the word of God. We're going to believe God. We're going to release our faith. We're going to believe God for your miracle breakthrough. Amen. You are in need of a breakthrough today. I believe that you have tuned in to the right broadcast. I believe that you have come to the right church. I believe that you're in the right place at the right time because I believe in miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's not an accident. That's right. It's not an accident that you are with us today. I believe that God has something in store for you. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Now, what about you? Do you believe the same thing with me? Do you believe that God has something in store for you? I believe it. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Oh, Jesus, you are Lord. You are God. See, I used to be sick. That's why I'm so convinced on what I'm teaching you because I am a living testimony of what the Word of God will do for you if you only believe. It's not something that I just teach because I heard other people teaching it. No, it is something that I teach because I have experienced it. Amen. I have experienced God's healing power in my own body. I know that what I'm teaching you will work. Amen. And so what I'm asking you to do is just believe in Jehovah, uh, Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Believe in Jehovah Elohim. Believe in Jehovah Tishkanu. Believe in Jehovah Shalom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And let the Lord God that we serve minister to our hearts today. The love of God, the peace of God, the anointing to set us free. Amen. I believe we're in the right place today, and I believe we're at the right time. God, going, I'm telling you, I believe that there's going to be a, a, a flow of the Spirit of God moving in this place, nature like a rushing river, a rushing mighty river. Amen. A rushing mighty river. See, God has already healed you. You just don't know it. That's the whole problem. <laughs> God has already healed you, but you just don't know it yet. Amen? Regardless of the sin, regardless of the pain, regardless of the sickness, regardless of the disease, regardless of whatever the enemy has did to you, whatever he has said to you, God has already healed you. Well, come on in. Oh, is on the way. Amen? God has already healed you. He's already making a way for you. What he is expecting out of you is to only believe. Only believe. Because all things are possible to him that believes. God is doing something right now in the earth and he's getting the earth attention. Notice what God is doing right now. He's calling the earth to pray. He's calling the people of the land to pray like they never prayed before. Amen. People are, are being touched by, by God like they've never been touched before. And people are, 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 are looking to God for answers today like they never looked before. Amen. We're in a time, folks, that God is really going to show himself strong. And I believe that the time is now. Amen. I believe that the time is now. What are you, what's on your heart? What's on your mouth? What is God, what is God, what do you believe in God for today? Are you believing God for a touch? Are you believing God for a healing? Are you believing God to just to just do what he wanted to do. Well, God, he's going to always do what he wanted to do. But what do you want him to do? What do you want him to do? Amen. What is it in your life that you need God to change? Amen. Well, I tell you what. I know there are people that are around the world right now that are really hurting. And they are really looking for answers. Amen. Well, right now, I want to share some scripture with you. Because I believe... That the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. Like I said, regardless of what, regardless of what you are, no matter, no matter what you may have been 
through, no matter what kind of disease that the enemy has placed upon you, no matter, I don't care if it's an un incurable disease, but Dr. Morris Riddle showed me that God can heal even incurable diseases. Amen. Because he had a, a vasculitis on his legs. Amen. And it was eating away at his flesh. And glory to God, God just, just closed that hole up. He healed all his flesh. He closed that hole up on Dr. Cirillo's leg. And God delivered that man. That man is back on the battlefield running for the Lord like he was 15 year old again. Glory to God. And I know that we serve the same God. God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. The same God that healed me the same God healed my man of God, Dr. Cirillo, and the same God will heal you. Glory to God. He will heal you. It is God's will to heal you. A lot of people, we have this, we have this question about in our heart. I don't know if it's God's will for me to be healed. Well, it is God's will for you to be healed. It is God's will for you to be healed. Amen. So I want to turn your attention to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. Let's look at verse number 26 first, since that's the scripture that the Lord gave me to start out with today. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and would do that which is right in his sight, and would give ear unto his commandment, and keep all his statutes, this is what he said, so I will put none of these diseases, none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I and the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. So I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Yep. I'm going there. Uh-huh. Because this is a place where we are releasing our faith. I'm telling you, prepare your heart to release your faith in just a few. After a while, because... We're going to be releasing our faith in connection with yours. We're going to see that will of God manifest in your body today. Amen. And in a first, in a, in a Isaiah chapter 53, look at verse number, verse number 3, it says, Isaiah 53 and verse 3, He was despised and rejected of men, a, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as were our face from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Verse number four. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Who is he talking about? They are talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Amen. And afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, folks, there's an anointed rest upon my life today. I've been fasting now for the last, well, since Thursday. I've been fasting since Thursday, every day. Amen. And we are praying on our set times of prayer at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. Amen. And, and I believe that the anointing upon my life right now is uh, extra. Uh, ordinary. Glory to God. Because see, the God that we serve, God wants to do something in your life to show himself strong. You may be saying, well, well, I don't know who that guy is. It doesn't matter who I am. All you need to know who Jesus is. Because I'm, I'm representing the kingdom of God. I'm not representing the Burgess Foundation. <laughs> I'm representing <laughs> I'm representing the kingdom of God, glory to God, amen. And so, as I represent the kingdom of God, I want you to realize that the anointing that is upon me today is for you, amen. I have spent time in the presence of God, and I, this time I spent in the presence of God was especially for you. I've been praying for you already. I know that there are a number of you that are believing God for a manifestation of His healing power, amen. And I believe that right now is your season. Right now is your season to receive what you believe in God for. Look at verse number 5. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Talking about Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. Notice what he said? We are healed. So he's not just talking to he's not just talking to someone. He's talking to all of us. He said we, amen, as plural. That means more than one. So we are healed. I don't know about you, but if I was sick, you know what I would believe in God for? I would believe, I would be believing God for my healing. Amen. If I was in pain, I would believe in God that that pain would have no place in me. If I was in need of a, a, of a miracle touch from heaven, I would, I would release my faith and I would not allow no one to speak anything negative toward me concerning what I am believing God for. Because we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask to think according to His power that works in us. See, we overcome Satan. How do we overcome Satan? We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, and by the, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, and how? And by the word of our testimony. Amen. So we have a reason to what we are here for. We are here to release God's presence. In your life. Amen. In your life. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. And I don't know, <clears throat> but I believe if I were you, I would be in total agreement right now. Not 20% in agreement, not 50% in agreement, but I would be 100% in agreement with the Word of God that's being preached today because where's the agreement? There's power. Amen. Whereas there is agreement, there is power. So I'm, in, I'm encouraging you, if you just, just come in agreement with the word that's being preached today, and I believe that whatever you believe in God for, God will not withhold it from you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because God's word, from, 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 over, from, from cover to cover in the book, in the, in, the, in the word of God, we will find something that God is doing, talking about people being healed. Glory to God. God just brought a scripture to my mind when I said that. I want to take you to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter... Now, this was not in my lesson for today, but this is what the Lord just placed in my heart. Amen. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter 5. Amen. Glory to God. Let's see what that is talking about here. Glory to God. 2 Kings chapter 5. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Ashatalabaki. No, that's first king. I need second king. That's not, I, I know what I, that wasn't right what I was looking at. So let's go, let's go on to second king. Amen. And I go to second king chapter five. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is talking about uh, the servant name. Amen. Glory to God. I feel strongly that that's what we're going to right now. Yep, it is. It sure is. <laughs> I just knew my spirit. Amen. So now, as we, go, as we come here, now we deal, we're talking about people right now that are looking to man for their healing. Amen? Because, see, if you're looking to man to be your healer, then you're looking in the wrong place. God never told, God never told man that God said he was your healer. That's what he said in Isaiah, in Exodus chapter 15, the latter part of verse number 26. God said that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. He never said that Larry was the man who was going to heal you. God said, I am the Lord that healed thee. So when we look at the word of God, we can see here that this is a, a, a tremendous story about this uh, a soldier uh, uh, that, that, was, that, that had uh, received leprosy. And he went, I mean, they, they brought these cap the people, uh, Israel, they brought Judah, Israel people into captivity. And one of the maids, uh, one of the uh, name of because the name of wife brought in one of the women of captivity into his house to be a maid or a housekeeper. And so this maid began to talk to the uh, the name of wife and said, "Would that name would go to Israel because God would heal him there, you know?" And so now this 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 word got back to the king. So he write he write a letter and get all these all these uh. Uh, gifts and everything, and tell them to go to the king, amen, and and, and, and present these, these gifts, and when the, and, and when he, when they would deal with the king, say, this this king that he presented these gifts to, he rent his throne because he thought that this man was trying to provoke him to war, amen, trying to provoke him to war. 
So he ripped his clothes. And then uh, the prophet heard about the king ripping his clothes. And, and so this is where, now this is, the, this is, this is a, a beautiful story, folks, of how God is healing incurable diseases. See, we think that God always has a set way of doing things. Because I can take you in three areas of the Bible, three, maybe even four areas of the Bible where people were healed from leprosy. And each time was a different way that God healed. Amen. A different way that God healed. Now, the reason why I like this right here, because this man was asked to do something that was uh, a so, it was to him, it was so insignificant because there was, there was, Good, clean water all around, but he sent him to the most dirtiest water that was around. Amen. <laughs> he sent him to the most dirty water that was around. But it wasn't the water that was going to heal him. It was his obedience that was going to heal him. So let's read a little bit. Now, now Naaman, captain of the of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man. With, uh, with with his master and an honor and notice what he said an honorable and honorable amen he was a great man with his master and honorable because because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria he had also a mighty man he was also a mighty man of valor in in valor in, in valor amen but he was notice what he said but he was what leper. But he was leper, and, a, and now, now this is now this is good, folks, because see, I believe in that you that are dealing with incurable diseases, you that have been diagnosed with cancer, you that have been diagnosed with uh, uh, sicknesses and disease that there is no cure for. I believe in God today that your situation is going to be turned around. Amen. I'm believing God today that your situation is going to be turned around, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind right now in the spiritual realm over every person that will believe you for a manifestation of your healing power. I bind every argument in the spiritual realm over their lives. And I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Now, God, I'm asking you to look upon them through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for a ransom, for their deliverance, for their healing, and for their sin. God, you are the Lord God that healed us. So we thank you because you've already sent your word. So Father, as we bind up this spirit of infirmity, we release our faith in conjunction with the faith of them that are believing right now, Father. We bind up every spirit of doubt. We bind up every spirit of doubt right now in Jesus' name. You loose your demonic stronghold on every heart under the sound of my voice. And Father, I give you praise and I give you glory for it now in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to believe God with me right now. Believe God with me for your miracle. Believe God with me for your healing. Amen. Look at verse number, verse number three. And she said, no, no, verse number two. And, 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 the, uh, and the Syrians had gone out and uh, gone by company and brought and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife, and she said unto and she said to her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophets that he was that he was at Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. So now we see the story begin to unfold. Verse number four, and one of and one went in. And told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that in the land of Israel, and the in the land of Israel, and the king of Syria said, Go to go, and I will send I, I will send a letter unto the king of Israel, and he departed, and, and, and took with him ten talents of silver. Amen. No, he did. He brought ten talents of what? Silver and and six thousand pieces of what? Gold and ten chains of raiment. And he brought the letter of the king of Israel, saying, "He brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, then, this letter is to come unto thee. Behold, I have." There will sit name of my servant to thee, 
that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass that, and it came to pass when the king of Israel had heard the the letter, the letter that he that he read, that he rent his clothes and said, "Am I God?" He rent his clothes and said, "Am I God?" See, they was not looking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They was looking to the arm of the flesh of man. But glory to God, there was a, a man of God in the land. That when the king rent his clothes, that the, the man of God was concerned. Why are you renting your clothes? Amen. Look, look, look what it says right here in verse number in verse number uh, uh, verse number uh, uh, four, number one five. And the king and the king of and the king of Sarah said, Go, go, go to go, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, and, uh, glory to God, and then a six thousand pieces of gold and ten chains of ram. And he brought the, the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have with there was sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of the leprosy. And he and it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man might send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray thee, consider, I pray you, and see him, and see how he uh, seeketh a quarrel against me. See, he see, he believed that this king is trying to establish a quarrel against him, or, 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 or trying to pick a fight with him. Amen. But that's not the case. That's not the case at all. I like this story because it's point, even though it's, it's pointing to the ruler of the of the country, the king. Amen. But the king realized that hey, I don't have this type of power. Amen. This is not my this is not my office. <laughs> this is not where this is not my office. So the king realized that that what he was being asked of, he knew it was impossible for him to accomplish, amen, to do. And so now, look here. Look here. I I tell you, this is this is awesome. Because there's a lot of people right now, you have you have incurable diseases in your body. You have incurable diseases in your body, and you are focused on man. Oh, how, oh, this is for someone right now. This is for someone right now. You have incurable diseases in your body, and you are not looking to God, but you're looking to man. And, and the same as this man came to uh, the king of Israel, amen, he came to a man. He didn't, he didn't go to a servant of God. He didn't go to a, a man of God. He went to a man. And this man knew that he was coming to the wrong person. Amen. So a lot of us have gone to the wrong people trying to receive what we wanted from God. We've gone to the, we've gone to the wrong man. We've gone to the wrong woman. We've gone to the wrong person. We're not even consulting God. We're thinking that we can bypass God because, see, this man, he's a healer. I'm going to go to him. No, you better not go. You better not bypass God. Regardless of where, who you're going to, God is always your center of focus. Amen. Don't care if God is using the man. God is still your center of focus. The man is just an instrument in the hand of God. Amen. An instrument in the hand of God. So this man came to. Now notice what he says right here in verse number. In verse number uh, seven. And it came to pass when the king of Israel read his, his, his read the letter, he read his clothes and said, "Am I the God who to, am I God to kill and to make alive that this man do sin unto me?" To recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, this, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it, and it was so, when Elijah, nobody said, when Elijah, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come down now to me. And he and he shall 
Know that there is a what? A prophet in Israel. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Now what is a prophet? A prophet is a, is, is a, is a, a voice. The prophet is a voice of God. Amen. The prophet is a voice of God. And when the man of God realized that the king had rent his clothes, he sent for this man to come to him. And now we see, now notice, this man come to him because of his position. He is, he's expecting special treatment because he's a captain of the host. Amen. Of the Syrian army. He coming to a man of God expecting uh, favor. He expecting special treatment. He expecting to just, you know, to come out and be greeted. He expecting a, a handshake. He's expecting a hug. I don't know what he expected, but he did not get what he was expecting. Amen. He did not, he was not received in the way he thought he should have been received. See, a lot of us think we should be received in a certain way. Amen. When God will never come down to your level, amen, because normally man's heart is so full of pride, amen. See, because of his position, because of name and position, he came expecting this man of God to come out and humble himself and bow down to him. <laughs> that, you know, but no, God is not, God is not going to do that to, to, for you. He's not going to come bow down to you. God is going to deliver you, but it's going to be at his terms. At his terms. Amen. God is God all by himself. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, God is not going to turn away from his standard. His word will not alter because of your ideals. <laughs> He's not going to alter his word because you have some strange idea. Amen. Amen. And so right here in verse number 8, right here in verse number 8, he said, uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 8, amen, and it, said, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let, let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And so Naaman came with him, with his, with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha and Elisha sent, now notice what Elisha did, he sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee. Now, this was an easy request. It was an easy request. See, normally, people, when they're, how's God, how's God going to hear you? Well, people, they, they expected to come in different ways. Amen. Naaman never expected to hear a simple word as he received, and that was to go and to dip seven times, where? In the Jordan River. He never realized that such significant could come out of that. Said so such a miracle could come out of that. So he began to pitch a fit. <laughs> he began to get angry. My God, he began to get angry, began to get upset. Why? Because he was a captain of the host. Can he just at least come out and acknowledge me? He had to sit his servant out to talk to me. <laughs> the man was so mad, he got up and took off. Amen. But now his servant that came with him, he come and talk to him. He said, hey, look, look, look here. Let me tell you something, man. If the prophet would have told you to do something great, would you not have did it? <laughs> would you not have did it to actually do something great? And, and, and he began to, he says, you know you would. So why? Because he asked you to do this, that you are reluctant to do so. And he said, just go and do what the man of God said. What do you got to lose except your legacy? <laughs> what do you got to lose except your legacy? Well, what do you got to lose by obeying God's instructions other than your cancer, other than your diabetes, other than your heart problem, other than your lung problem, your blood disease, amen, your tumor, your, your, your gout, amen? What do you got to lose 
Would you not obey God's word because it's not coming to you from someone that is highly respected throughout the earth? Amen. Or would you receive it from a low, a man of low degree, low stature? Because see, God is not looking at, he's not looking at the people you're looking at for your condition. He focused on someone that you least expected to come to. Amen. It could be me. It could be someone else. But the thing about it, you got to be willing to listen to God when God is speaking to you, whoever God is using on your behalf. Whoever God is using on your behalf. You got to be have you got to have an ear to hear what God is saying. Amen. And you got to be willing to take a step of faith. Amen. So Naaman, so Naaman, he, he, he came to this place. Now, now he came to this place because, see, Naaman had an incurable disease. Matter of fact, he had a, a life-threatening disease. A life-threatening disease. Amen. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, bro. An excommunicated disease. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So notice what he said in verse number nine. Verse number nine says, so Naaman came and so Naaman came with his with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. And Elijah sent his, sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and they and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be cleansed. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out. And meet, come out to me, and stand, and stand, and call on the the name of his Lord, of the name of the Lord of his God. Amen. Notice what he said. <laughs> now, now, now that's now, now that's really that's really pride talking. That's really pride talking. Notice what he said right here. Glory to God. And call upon the name of the Lord. The God, the Lord his God, and, and strike his hand over me, mm -hmm. over the place that and recover the leper, and, and are are not are not Arna and per, purple uh, fur, 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 rivers of, of Damascus better than all the waters of, of Israel. May I not wash? See, he wanna pick out his own place. He wanna pick out his own place. To receive his miracle. Amen. He comes to God, but he's telling God how he wants it. <laughs> he's coming to God, but he wants to tell God how he wants his miracle. Amen. Folks, when you come to God, you don't, you don't, you don't dictate to God which way that God is going to move on your behalf to recover you or to heal you, amen, of your cancer, of your heart problem, of your lung disease, amen. Of your uh, spinal cord disease, amen. Of your of your, your your brain tumor, you don't come to God and try to tell Him which way to do it, amen. You come to God humble, amen. You come to God humble. But notice, notice the, 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 what's going on right here. Notice how Naaman he 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 he, 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 he expected to receive. He expected he expected preferential treatment. He expected. Uh, to be heard because he was the, the 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 captain of the host, amen, of the army of Syria, amen. He expected all this special treatment and everything, but you notice, God has no respecter of person. Hallelujah. God has no respecter of person. Amen. 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 So now let's look here. At verse number, what we stop at? Verse number 14, let's go to verse number 14. Amen. Ver, verse number 14, then went he down, no, let's go back to verse number 13, because that down a little bit too far. Verse number 13. And his servant came near and spake, and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee go to do, if the prophet bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou? not have done it? How much rather than when he said 
to be washed and be clean. Wash and be clean. Glory to God. Now notice what, he, notice, notice what he's going on to say. Verse number 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saving of the man of God. He went into the water. Notice that could not I have gone to this river over here? Yeah. <clears throat> he's going down. Just complaining. <clears throat> Come back up. And now he's talking about this other river was a whole lot better than the one that he's sitting through that he's going down again the second time. Every time he go down, he come back up. Amen. And he said, could I have like gone over here and just, and he's just going down again. He started complaining. Started complaining. Then all of a sudden, about the fourth, about the fourth time he got ready to go down, he stopped complaining and he just went on and did what he had to do. Just went on down. Amen. And on the seventh time, he came back up. He was so amazed. He was so amazed at what had happened. His flesh returned to him as a little child's flesh. Amen. And this man, he was so excited. He wanted to go back to Naaman and take him all these gifts. Amen. But let me tell you something. Sometimes God don't want your gift. Amen. Sometimes God don't want your gift. God wants your, God wants your heart. Your heart could be the greatest gift that you could ever give to God. Your heart could be the greatest gift that you could ever give to God. Amen. Sometimes you, 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 you go, you believe in God for something, and God, all God is asking for you is to walk in obedience toward Him. It's to humble yourself before His mighty hand. Amen. And just follow in the follow the instruction that I give you. Amen. So when we when we uh, we want to go to these people because we heard so much about them, we want to go to this man because we heard so much about him, and we want to go to this woman because we heard all the miracles that this woman did. Amen. But what about just going to Jesus? What about going to Jesus? Jesus Christ has the answer for all your ailment, all your problem, all your diseases, no matter what disease you had, Jesus Christ has the answer. Glory to God. When I, when, I, when, I, when I was sick, I didn't have money to go to no doctor. This man, he came with, tick, with, a, with a load of money. To, uh, what is it? Tick? A hundred or some piece of gold and, and ten times of silver, amen, and ten uh, ten changes of raiment, amen. And he and he just brought all this stuff for the man of God. But at the end, after the end, the man of God would not receive not one piece. Because all God wanted was to see the heart of the man. Where is your heart at today? You believe in God for your miracle? You believe in God for your breakthrough? Where is your heart today? Where is your heart? Are you looking to man? Are you putting your confidence and your trust in man today? When God has told you to look to me, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And you putting your confidence in man? Where is your heart? Amen? Where is your heart today? Will you not trust the Lord your God? Will you not give him all that do him? Amen. So Naaman, Naaman, he, 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 he went, notice what he said, and Naaman said, Shall there be, shall there not, shall there not, then I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, mules, See, he wanted, he wanted to go back and give him all this stuff. He wanted to give him all this stuff. But he did not receive any of it. But his servant, name, his servant, the prophet's servant, he ran after name. He ran after name. See, that's what greed will do for you. People you are always reaching out. People are always trying to, trying to get something. And greed always leads them to a dead end street. A dead end street. Because they find themselves in trouble. They find themselves taking upon them the same thing that the one that was delivered had had. We don't need to come to God. With a heart full of 
bitterness and anger and, and resentment. We don't need to come to God with a, 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 an added, a, 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 what they call this, a, a stealing spirit, a taking spirit, a, a something to receive something that you don't even deserve. When we come to God, we come to God with an open heart, a heart that is humble, a heart that is tender toward the things of God. And God looks upon that heart and He blesses that heart. He pour out His Spirit upon that heart. And everything that's in that heart, because of His willingness, because of His obedience, because He humbled Himself, everything that God intended that person to receive, God gave that person. Amen. Naaman walked away. I mean, he was healed. He was healed. But the servant of the prophet went and lied on the man of God. And the thing that was on Naaman came on him and his household. People, we need to be careful how we do things when God is the author of it. Amen. When God is the one that did the work. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. And so, so Naaman expected, Naaman expected preferential treatment because he was a, because he was the captain of the army of Syria. Amen. He, he thought that Elijah would come out in person and greet him. Amen. And pray for him. That he would recover from his healing. That he would recover from his uh, uh, leprosy. But not just, not just send out a messenger and tell him to go and dip seven times. Amen. He didn't want to hear that from a servant. He didn't want to hear from someone of great stature. Amen. But he heard it from a servant. And he went away, grieved. And he had to. But eventually he turned around and went and did what he was intended. And he went down and, and did like he was supposed to. But at the same time, folks, at the same time, you need to understand this. At the same time, he went and his heart wasn't right. But he still went. His heart wasn't right, but he still went. Sometimes your heart is not right, but you, if you still walk on in obedience. Sometimes you may not understand what you're, what's going on, but if you still walk in obedience, amen, God can use your willingness and your obedient heart a whole lot faster than he use the heart that is hardened toward him or toward his instructions. The instructions of God is sometimes will bring to a place of great, of great position in life. And the instructions of God can sometimes bring you to a place where you are just humbling yourself just to get by. Amen. But when God puts you in whatever situation he puts you in, you are there for a reason. The woman of Samaria was at the well and Jesus came for a drink of water and she said, look at you. You call yourself your Jews don't have no deal with Samaria. And he said, woman, well, if you know who this that is asking a drink of me, you will ask of him of living water. And she said, where is it that is this living water? You don't have a bucket of drop of water with. And Jesus said, I'm telling you folks, Jesus said, I am the living water. And at that time, his, his disciples walked up and said, they didn't even ask why you're talking to the, to the woman. Amen. But the woman took off and ran into the city. She went telling everybody about this Jesus. She went telling everybody about this Jesus. It's not this the man. He told me everything I ever did in my life. It's not this the Christ. And so they all ran out to see. They all ran out to see. And I'm asking you today, will you go and see the one that God has ordained to minister to your life, the one that God has given the anointing, the power, his presence to bring to a place of inner healing, peace, amen. God wants to set you free. No matter where you are in your walk with God, look with me in, 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 in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Amen. Matthew chapter 8. I want you to look with me there. Amen. Because see, you thinking that your healing is dependent upon where you are. This man in the chapter 8, 
He was a leopard man too. Amen. He was a leopard man also. But at this, but but still, he had a he he, he had to, he had to, he, he believed God for his healing too. So in, in chapter eight, look at verse number two. He said, "And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean." Now notice, now notice, he said, "Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean." See, Naaman, he didn't know if it was the Lord's will or not, but yet still he went in obedience. But he walked away healed. He walked away healed. Why? Because he followed the instruction. Eventually, he followed the instruction. But notice in, in Matthew chapter eight, verse number, verse number, verse number three. And Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. A lot of you wondering, well, I got this cancer, and the doctor gave me uh, six months, or the doctor gave me uh, less than a, uh, about, about a, uh, a year or so to live, amen. Then uh, I don't know if it's God's will for me to be healed. Well, let me tell you something, folks. God's will for you to be healed is yes, and amen. It's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus came that you may have life and that you may have more abundantly. Notice what this leper did when he came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 8. And this leper, and behold, this leper came and worshipped him. The leper came and worshipped him. Now, when leper come into your, into your presence, that's a time to scatter. <laughs> because if this leper touch you, amen, you are, will, you have a, a very good chance to become a leper yourself. Amen. Amen. Because that disease is is uh this disease is contagious. It's contagious. Amen. And and that's why they had to isolate themselves. That's why they was isolated from everyone. That's why they had their own little leper colony. Well they all the lepers are there. Amen. All the, all the lepers are there. So this leper came, he looked out from a distance, he saw Jesus, and he said, What what does I got to lose? If I stay here, I'm going to die. If I go there, I could be stoned to death or I could be healed. Amen? Because I've heard so much talk about that man, Jesus. And so what am I going to do? Am I going to sit here and just die? Am I going to put forth some action with what I've heard about this man? If I'm going to believe what I've heard about this man, if I'm going to, if I'm going to exercise my faith and, and take a step, and take a step of faith and receive my miracle, receive my healing. What am I? See, it's up to me now because I, I've heard that it is God's will for me to be healed. Whether it's leprosy, whether it's cancer, whether it's whatever disease that it is, God is going to heal me. Amen? So, what this leper did? He, he, I, I believe he, he, he looked at he looked over there and saw Jesus. And so, instead of him, he weighed out the differences. If I stay here, I'm surely going to die. But if I go to him, I could be healed, I can be cleansed, or they could stone me to death. He, he, he looked at all the options. Amen. I can imagine that looking at all the options. But now, here you go. Verse number two. And behold, the leper came and worshiped. So the leper came, and what did he do? He worshiped. He worshiped. He worshiped. Amen. That's right. As he began to worship, what does what does worship do? If we stop right now and just start worshiping God, just start praising God. Just start thanking God for His glory, for His strength, for His and for everything. What does what does that do? That changes your presence. The presence of God begins to fill the place. The presence of God begins to fill the place, and all of a sudden, the anointing. Oh, I feel the anointing. Oh, glory to God! The anointing is starting to fall right now. I'm telling you right now, folks. The anointing is starting to fall right now. Amen. It's starting to fall right now. The presence of the Lord right now is starting to fill the place. Why? Because worship, worship, worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Worship. Glory to God. Amen. So this leper, he ran into the presence of the Lord. He, I can imagine, he fell down at his feet and began to worship him. He began to worship him. And all of a sudden, the, the people all around, it's just like, oh, 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 oh. They run it everywhere. They run it. They scatter out. But he looked up to Jesus and he just started worshiping. Oh, I worship you. Thank you. Oh, Master, I worship you. You are the, the, the Son of God. You are the anointed one. You are Christ, the healer. Amen. Then all of a sudden, the fear began to wane. The spirit of fear lost its grip in the heart of man. Because worship 
began to override fear. Glory to God. Worship began to override fear. And this man said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, not being afraid at all, stretched forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And this leprosy was cleansed. Hallelujah. This leprosy was cleansed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, we, are, we need to understand that your healing is right now, here. You got cancer? You're dealing with cancer right now? Your healing is here right now. Amen? Your healing is right where you are. If you're listening to this message, your healing is right where you are. All you got to do is release your faith. And don't be acting like man. Oh, if the man of God was here with me and he could lay hands upon me, oh, I know I could be healed. The man of God didn't come out of the house. He only sent a servant out of the house. And he told Naaman what to do. He said, Naaman, go down to the Jordan River and dip seven times and your, and your flesh will return again. Amen? Your, your flesh will return again. Naaman got mad and went away mad, angry, because he expected preferential treatment. And a lot of you thinking that you've got to get to the man of God in order to get your healing. You think that if he don't lay hands upon you, you can't get closed up for his spit to get on you or something. <laughs> you think that you won't get your healing. Well, let me tell you something. All you got to do is just make a decision in your heart that you're going to receive your healing. Because your healing is right there, right now, where you are. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Your healing is right there, right now, right where you are. You don't have to do nothing special. All you got to do is believe the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Folks, I used to be sick. I used to be sick. And I'm sharing with you something that I know will bring you to a place of inner healing. Inner healing. I mean, God will heal your deep wounds, your emotions, and everything. God will heal the, 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 the suffering and the pain that you've gone through. He will cause the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And all the things which are good and pure and perfect and love that's good report, you should begin to think on these things. Don't let your situation rule your mind. Don't let your, your, your pain override your, 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 your heart. Amen. Don't let the, the things that you're experiencing cause you to miss out on God's promises. Because the thing that God has prepared for you to receive is ready right now for you to open up your heart and receive it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for your miracle with your power. And I release my faith right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we're not going to come to you in one way and expect you to to, to deliver us the way that we think we ought to be delivered. Father, we're going to let you deliver us the way that you want to deliver us. Father, whichever way you choose, we accept it right now. We accept it by faith right now in Jesus' name. If you want me to go to my bathroom and fill my tub full of water and dip seven times in that tub, God, I know that this will be the ideal way for me to be healed because this is your word for me. If you want me to go out to my swimming pool and dip seven times into that, into that pool, I know that I can be healed. If you want me to go down to the river and dip seven times into the river, I know that this is my way of receiving my healing. Father, whatever your way, I'll accept it. I'll accept it. If you want me to go in and get into a mud hole and jump up and down seven times, I'll jump in a mud hole seven times. Amen. I know that this will be your best for me to receive my healing. So don't try to put a, a, a God on, in a box that you would have to only receive from God the way you think you ought to receive from God. Because God's way is higher than your ways. His thoughts is higher than your thoughts. Amen. God wants to do what he wants to do, but he needs you to follow his instructions so he can do what he wants to do in your life. Amen. God is not going to yield to your, he's not going to get into your boat. Amen. He wants you to get into his boat. Why do you, he, if you get in your boat, your boat is already got holes in it. 
It's already going, it's already sinking. So let's get in the boat that we know that's going to make it to the other side. Let's get in the boat with Jesus, amen. And let's go to the other side. Let's stop looking at our circumstances. Let's stop looking at, at, the, at our situation. Let's stop focusing on the pain that we're experiencing in our body. And let's start focusing on the one that can deliver us from the pain. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Oh, glory to God. His name is Wonderful Counselor. His name is the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God. His name is Jehovah Shalom. Amen. His name is Jehovah Elohim. His name is Jehovah Rapha. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I say unto you, my people, as I have gave this message to you today from my servant, whom you barely know, I have placed an anointing upon him that if you will follow the instructions that, that will come forth, uh, that have come forth, I will show myself strong on your behalf. For I am God, and I take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I do not take lightly when you uh, discredit my servant because of his stature, because of his abilities, because I am a God of all statues. I am a God of all abilities. I created you in my own image and after my likeness. If I have not called you, and if I not said unto you that I am the Lord that healed thee, so don't look at the man, don't look at the person that declared my word, look to me, for I am the Lord God that healed thee. Hey, oh shit, hey, ma, na, na, this, and hey, and the boss of God, and So release your faith right now, and believe that I am speaking directly to you, and receive your healing right now. The spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease, your cancer right now is departing you. Your diabetes, your arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, is all in your hands, all in your, your joints right now. It is leaving you right now. Just rejoice with me, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Oh, shout out of my side. Ye kill out of my side. Yo se kill out of my side. Yandalada basso bereshi. Ah, someone has a your 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 knee. I see I see a see a knee and, and it's just like it just it just just corroded with arthritis. I don't know, it looked like you had some kind of accident and that knee it just I mean it just gives you such a fit, such pain. God is touching your knee right now in Jesus' name. God is touching your knee right now in Jesus' name. Oh, there's, oh, now your muscles are starting to tingle because your, your leg is starting to be healed. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Lupus, Sata. Lupus, Sata. In the name of Jesus, Lupus is being destroyed right now by the authority of him who have called us out of darkness. Lupus, go in Jesus' name. Skelio, Skelio, Soros, Skelio, Soros, Shaka Mali de Vaso, Eka Narabakoria, Sikila Baka. In the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, Shaka Baki. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you, Father. Someone, you just had a, 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 a heart attack and you, and, you, and you went to the doctor. Eka Narabasa. And, and while you was there in the hospital, you not only had a heart attack, but you had a stroke. You had a stroke following that heart attack. That heart attack. And God is healing you right now. That stroke, it paralyzed the right side of your body. And God is healing you right now. You don't, that limping that you're doing, you're not going to limp no more. God is touching you right now in Jesus' name. God is touching those nerves right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you. I bless you, Father, 
in Jesus' name. Glory to God. 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 Someone you deal with migraine headaches. Migraine headaches. Right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke that migraine headache. I command it to go in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. He was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows, and with his stripes we are healed. He was wounded. For our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows, and with his stripes we are healed. Father, I thank you right now that your anointing is being released. Impartations have went forth, and miracle healing power is ministered to the hearts, and to the minds, and to the body of your people. I thank you for it right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I may not call out your sickness. I may not call out the pain or the area of your, of your, your pain right now. I want to encourage you right now to reach out and touch. Reach out. And touch right now by faith my hand and receive your healing. I release the anointing of God right now. Touch in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. I thank you. I feel the virtue right now flowing right now. I sense the virtue flowing out of me right now. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. I give you glory and I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you, if, if God touched your body, I want you to let me know. Let me know, amen, if God touched your body. I'm receiving testimony from people uh, just last night. This morning I received testimony from people being touched by God. Amen. Last week, people tell me how God touched their bodies. Amen. When we, since we've been teaching on this, we've been getting, we, we've been getting testimony how God is touching lives and, and people are experiencing God's healing power. I want to hear your testimony. Amen. I want to hear your testimony. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's time for us to go ahead and receive our offering for today. Uh, we are over time, but that's all right. We're going to receive our offering today. Amen. And those of you that are that, that you know that God touched you, I want you to. Uh, uh, show God how much you appreciate what he's done for you. I want you to go to my website, those of you that have an ATM card or credit card, go to my website LarryBurgerMinistries.com Amen. And I want you to sow a seed today. A seed of thanksgiving. Amen. A seed of thanksgiving. Sow a seed today of thanksgiving. Amen. Glory to God. And I want you to uh, give that seed a name. Amen. Give that seed a name. Elizabeth, come get us some mama. Amen. Give that seed a name. Write a check for that now. Amen. And I want you to uh, give God something to show him how much you appreciate the anointing. Amen. How much you appreciate the anointing. Amen. So give God of your substance. Because God is releasing. See, you want to keep what God has done for you, then please don't hesitate to do as I'm instructing you to do right now. So a seed today. Go to my website, LarryBurkinMinistries.com. Sow a seed today. Amen. I don't care what the amount is. Just something to sow to show God that you that you really mean business. That you really receive. Amen. And then if you are going to be sending in through the mail. Amen. Just send it in through the mail and, and write a little note. Say, Pastor, 
I receive my miracle. I receive my touch. I receive my healing. Amen. Send your miracle offering in through the mail and say, Pastor, I receive my healing. Amen. Do it today. Go to my website, LabrickMinistries.com, or you can mail in to Lab uh, Larry Bergen Ministries, P.O. Box 417 Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. That's P.O. Box 4178. That's P.O. Box. Glory to God. Let me just get it again. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Go ahead right now and get your gift together and send your gift of love right now. P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. Make, and I'll also send in your prayer request. Let us know what God did for you. Amen. Send your testimony. Let us know what God did for you. Because we believe God is touching lives right now. We've been getting testimonies. People are sending in, that they're sending their gift of love in, they're, they're, they're receiving testimony. Amen. We receive a testimony of how God is touching their bodies, healing their bodies. It's your time now. This is your time to receive your healing. This is your time to receive your breakthrough. Amen. Receive everything that God has for you. Put your offering in the box right now. Amen. Put your offering in, 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 in the mailbox right now and say, Pastor, this is my offering. Get over there, please. You stand in the way. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for the gift, Father, the tithes for the offering, Father, that, that is coming into the house of God today. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that every need is met according to your riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that your word will not return void. And everything, God, that you endeavor to bring upon us because of our obedience, we receive our healing now. We receive it by faith, Father, in Jesus' name. And God, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you for it because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. And we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. If you're here today, you have a special, uh, you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want to invite you today to open up your heart and let Jesus in. Amen. Open up your heart and let Jesus in. Your miracle healing can start right now. Amen. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is the greatest miracle breakthrough that you can experience. But not only will Jesus come in as your Savior, but he will come in as your healer, your deliverer, your financier. Everything that God is, he will come in you. And he began to work his life, his nature in you. To help you to be everything he created you to be. Amen. And so I know that there's more to life than what we are experiencing. So I'm releasing my faith on your behalf for your salvation. Amen. For your deliverance, for your healing, for your breakthrough. Amen. So, as I pray, if you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, if you're here today, if you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, maybe you have made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, but for some reason or you backslid, you, you want to return to God, and God is not going to turn his back on you. God is saying to you, my son, my daughter, I am the Lord that healed thee. I will restore thee. I will bring you to a place of inner peace. Because you put your trust in me, I will not turn my back on you. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So if you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, or maybe you have, but you've actually been going to rededicate your life, I want you to say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, create in me a right spirit, and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and that you died for my sin. Today, as I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you, God, 
sent your son to pay the price for my sin. I receive that now. I receive salvation by faith in Jesus' name. Thank you for delivering me, for healing me, for setting me free. Today, I receive my miracle breakthrough. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right now, God is moving on your behalf. Father, I thank you. I thank you right now, Father, for touching these people that said this prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I feel the power of God just pulling on. Amen. If you have a special prayer request right now, I'll pray for you. If you have a special prayer request right now, I'll pray for you. My darling baby girl. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my daughter. God, I thank you, Father, for your divine health and healing. I thank you, Father, for keeping her. And I thank you, Father, for watching over her. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that I release right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. God, help her to know you and to recognize you young. And help her to walk in that anointing early. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for my dear sister, Lord God. I pray, Father, that your hand continue to rest upon her with divine health and healing. Father, I thank you that you supply every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. She believed, Father, for this new apartment, Lord God. She's going to want to move from the old apartment to a new apartment. So, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, let everything line up that needs to line up. And let everything be removed that needs to be removed. And, Father, let the blessing, because she's a tiger, let the blessing make room for her now. In Jesus' name, I declare it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Good to see you. Yeah. Amen. What is your prayer request? For everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my dear sister, Lord God. And, and Father, I thank you, Lord, that your hand rests upon her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I cancel in the spiritual realm every argument over her soul. Father, I release right now the spirit of bondage from her in Jesus' name. Father, what the enemy has meant for evil, Lord, let it be turned around for your glory. I bless her and I claim her soul for your kingdom and for your glory right now. Father, watch over her, her children, her grandchildren, Father, her family, her sisters, her brothers. Father, let her whole family come to know you and walk them right before you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for it. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else? You want to press her? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother. And I thank you, Father, for his family. Father, I thank you that your hand continues to be extended toward them and that you would use them, that you would strengthen them, that you would bring them to a place of expectancy, Lord God. Let your kingdom come, your will be done in their life and earth as it is in heaven. Father, I thank you and I praise you and I bless you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Pastor Oakley, I would like for you to come and dismiss us today, if you don't mind, please. Amen. I would like for you to come and uh, and just. Amen. I believe that we are in a good time today. Listen, stop pulling. Get that mic right there. Thank you. Give her that mic, brother. Oh, she got it. Amen. 
Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this service today. We thank you, Lord God, that what you do in the lives of your people, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that the people of God continue to seek in you, Lord God. And, and Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you will answer their prayers as they seek in you, as they seek in your kingdom, Lord God, as they seek your righteousness, Lord God, that you will manifest strong than they will have in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for the eyes of understanding has been enlightened, that they always walk on the truth and nothing but the truth. We bind every spirit of deception. We bind, we lose it, we break it off of the God's people. We thank you, Lord God, that your anointing and your power, Father, continue to manifest in their lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this service today as we leave this place. Father, that we will not leave your presence. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. We love you. We're going to continue to pray for you and your family. And know that it's never defeat through Christ Jesus. It's always a victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Lord, thank you. 